years and it got to the point where I didn't know what I resonated with and what I didn't resonate with. But ultimately, my goal is to raise frequency um, to help my clients process lower vibrational frequencies that are taking up space um, in the trauma body, make more space for more of their authentic soul to be embodied um, and then essentially raise the frequency. So referring to myself as an alchemist, quantum alchemist, that is generally the way that it's all encompassing. Um, I do have one-on-one -on -one sessions available um, this evening, tomorrow evening, and all day Monday. And I'm actually going to leave up the goddess gathering offering the lower price for, well, I say a year, but then I was like, well, if I do this again next year, it'll be another year. And essentially, this is a very near and dear thing for me. I match the frequency immensely, and so there's really no ending point. But I would like to invite you and encourage you to reach out to me if you have questions in regards to this or some of the other things that I do. Um, I consider myself a stone steward as part of the alchemy. I work with high vibrational stones and I make soul woven jewelry. So when I'm working with a client on something like that, I tap into the energetic field and I ask it how it would like to be supported and I create that in jewelry. So that is part of my offering um, as far as the shopping goes, but also I don't feel like I want to put a limit on that either. So if come push comes to shove and you decide you want to reach out to me in February or whatever, just mention SSGG and we can definitely work something out because the more of us that are focus on our own healing and our own growth and our own involvement, the better it is for all of us. And, um, you know, exactly like raising the vibrational frequency. When Sasha told me the topic for this week's adventure, I couldn't have fit with it more. So leading that into what we're going to be talking about today, um, the dragon, the elemental energy of the dragon realm has been coming to me for I, well, ironically enough, I resonated as an, a teenager and then through all the lessons and sorting, I really didn't connect until this past year. And full disclosure, anybody, as we're working in this group, there is a channeling that I'm going to be reading to give you some energy or information. And essentially, it will come with some energy. So just being aware that there could be some light codes downloaded or something like that to help clear out some stuff, give you an understanding, give you a new perspective. It does come through. Um, the dragon energy is primal energy. Um, and so it is elemental. So this came to me after a really deep dive with my own work. And the reason why the dragons are coming into our conscious now, consciousness now is because we are doing just that. We have been raising our own frequency and our consciousness, and it's kind of coming back in. Um, there's many different ways that you can work with the dragons. And I debated back and forth as to leading you through a meditational journey leading us to the underbelly and going inward and doing a drop in in the subconscious which is something that I work with frequently and um, I was guided to give you information information coded with vibration but to basically this is the inner some of you may be working with dragons already but the idea here is the innovation or introduction to the beginning of your journey or it's continuing on in the journey you've already been started so that you can continue to work with these dragons you have the tools in the toolbox to work with these dragons after you leave me. So um, I want to also place the invitation. Um, I work with many other mentors in this realm, in the UK, in Scotland, in Pennsylvania, and I am more than happy to connect us all. So if you're interested in more information on this, um, feel free to reach out to me through my direct email, through my cell phone. It's all in my website. Um, I'm more than happy to keep communication with all of you. And I think that's a really big part of this and why I'm so connected to the dragons is because my passion is to be working together as a team. And that doesn't necessarily have to happen in a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, I also, um, as a Reiki master, I also have incorporated and done Celtic rat Dragon Reiki and all these other attunements to kind of work into the flavor and the layers of what we're doing here. So 
First and foremost, I'd like to map out how I work with the dragons, and maybe this will resonate with you. Um, there's two major pillars that I usually focus with when working with the dragons. And um, so the first is working on myself and working with me and working with my own shadows and working with what's going on with me. Um, and two, the dragons have an extremely intense energy. So once you start to welcome this in, and this, and when I say welcome this in, this can be as easily done as taking space and taking time to sit down in a meditative state, go inward, and ask your dragons to come to you. If you're going inward, those are going to be probably more dragons that are going to be associated with you, ancestral lineage, um, spirit guides. If you're drawn to this workshop, you are definitely all in that realm of working. They are calling to you already because there is another absolutely fantastic workshop and this was the choice. So you're already there and they're very excited to be working with their humans again. Um, so every culture has their own myth, um, well, I say mythologicals, but stories and um, information that they pass down through the dragon realm. So this has been something that's been in our culture and in the earth culture for eons and eons. How I understand um, the energetic frequencies that dragons bring is these are soul fractal energetic frequency from the Big Bang. There are celestial and galactical energies that the, some of these dragons do carry, but they're not star beings. They're generally, from my understanding, um, connected to this earth and the different realms between this and this whole thing working with humans is their is their main priority right now and as we are here in the age of Aquarius and we're under the um, we understand that our frequency is raising now our consciousness is at a new level where we can connect with these high vibrational beings to help us do our work and do our work on ourselves and that brings me to the second pillar and how I work with the dragons and I welcome and invite you to do the same is with our planet planet. So as we know, as I've already expressed, these are elemental beings. So there are dragons from all of the different elementals that reside with the earth. The earth dragons, for example, the earth dragons are the, um, the guardians of the ley lines, the guardians of the energetic lines that are planted throughout the earth's circumference in which energy is running, kind of like and where they meet, those are our vortexes, and this is a place in which we bring in and channel in and anchor in these higher frequencies as our planet raises frequency raises consciousness in that way. So connecting with dragons from the, the specific elements is a really good way for us to do our part and anchor in these higher vibrational frequencies in specifically the elemental kingdom. So they're in, and they're in their retrospect. So with the earth dragons, you know, this is something you can do in your town or if you're visiting other towns, if you want to take these time, these moments, take your space and go inward and connect and connect your field with the energetic field of the ancestors of the land and the dragons that work with the land and the ley lines in the land. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free meditations that you can find on YouTube. So I figured instead of taking the time today because we have, you know, limited amount of time in this moment, why not give us some tools and how we can do this on our own? And it seems to be a really intense deep connection. So we talked about the earth um, and the earth dragons. The other one that's real prevalent right now, and they're really asking for us to connect with them on this. And then is the water, the water dragons, working with the water and the, L or the um, vibrational frequency of water. There's a lot that we can do. I mean, sometimes we can feel very overwhelming and very insignificant in this world and everything's moving and happening so quickly, but it can very, be very good for our individual practice as well as our collective practice to have this new awareness and introduce this into our ritual, into our regular um, spiritual discipline, if you were. Well, I'm really not a fan of discipline. Who wants to be disciplined? I mean, let's just have fun. But the time that we set aside 
for us and for our growth and for our connection to this planet, our connection to each other, and the connection to the dragons so we can introduce this energy into this um, into this frequent this energy into this um, earth plane easier and easier and especially as the frequency rises um, so on that note if you're searching through different um, meditations that are available if you're having a problem you're looking for the best one the person that you want me to refer you to please reach out to me on social media please reach out to me direct text or email and i can definitely lead you in the right direction because like i said this is the beginning they want this to continue to increase the awareness to be there and for us to take the time to reconnect with these ancient energies um so we're all very familiar with the fairy realm and the fae and those kind of elemental energies that we work with and have been working with on a more regular basis. Uh, a good way to understand this energy, this uh, dragon elemental energy, it is the macro polarity to the micro polarity of the fairy realm. So when we're working on um, those kind of energies, if there is some intense situation going on, maybe you've been kind of going through it and some trauma's coming up, well, that can be an uncomfortable experience, but with the Dragon Realm connection and having this tool in your toolbox, it can be very helpful to use this as a tool to help process through what's coming up. So triggers are treasures. If we're triggered or we're feeling emotion behind a situation that we're dealing with, it can be something, maybe not in that moment, maybe you're at work, maybe you're with family, but it can be something noted. And this can be something that is interworked into maybe your dragon meditation for that day. Then after you you know, took note of something that bothered you or something that came up in the moment, and then when you have your time and you put your... I mean, this is what we say when we say do the work. We don't want to push that back down. We don't want to put that away. We want to process that. We're not storage containers. We're processing units. Our energetic fields have the ability to transcend down these lower frequencies. And the more that we awaken this power, the easier that it becomes more fluid. That, you know, you start this now, maybe within the next couple months, you're feeling really comfortable with the idea behind processing it. Maybe we're using dragon energy to do so. Maybe we found and rooted in Gaia herself and using that energy to do so. But we're no longer not willing to feel it because we have a little bit more support. Um, they're telling me right now, always ask, always call them in. If you're feeling like any kind of emotion that's causing you not to feel safe, these are divine protectors of sacred light. The dragon realm, if we were going to give it a space in our atmosphere, is, is located above the city of light. And the city of light is where that forgiveness, unconditional love, that Christ energy is located. So this dragon realm energy is at a higher frequency to my understanding of the work that I've been doing in my channelings and everything that resonates with me. Also, I'd like to point out if there's something I'm sharing that doesn't really feel good for you, or maybe you've heard something else that you resonate with more, I am totally good with this. This journey is all individual, and some people are going to feel things, and they're going to resonate with things, and they're going to love things, and some people may have a different way. Um, most of this information, if not all of it, essentially, because I've never physically in the 3D met a dragon, is channeled. So, you know, we are still looking through the lens of the channel. Um, somebody who I'd like to bring attention to and give credit where credit is due, a woman by the name of Brandy Yavalori. She is um, a very accomplished dragon channeler, and she owns an organization called Feed Your Spirit. I would need to give her credit in this because eventually I am going to read a channeling that has a lot of like codes energy in it and a good understanding for us to move forward with. But I did want to give credit where credit is due. So that's another elemental being, uh, elemental specialist. Um, she's a shaman in Pennsylvania, and I uh, can give you her information if you feel drawn to that as well. There's lots of us out there these days. Okay, I digress. So we talked about earth energy dragons, we talked about water energy dragons. Um, there are all sorts of different kinds of dragons in which you, you can connect with. 
Um, let me pull up some information. So I'm not going anywhere, but you might see my little guy. Can you guys still see me? Yes? Okay, cool. So trying to save some paper these days. I feel like I print everything out, but I'm always looking at it on my computer. So why do I need to keep printing all this stuff out? <laughs> okay, so we talked about earth energies, earth dragons. We talked about um, water dragons. Um, we have rainbow dragons. Okay, so a rainbow dragon is another, um, this is an ascension dragon. And right now we're in this really super high vibrational frequency of ascension. Some of us are have been awake for years and others of us are just starting to understand that we have an energetic system, a chakra system. A chakra system that works with vibrational frequency that also includes color. So these rainbow dragons um, have been given the divine blueprint of Mother Earth from divine support source and support her on the next stage of evolution on this earth. So you might feeling today is a good or whatever day is a good day for a good ritual to reconnect and help assist in the transition as we bring these higher vibrational frequencies in. So the rainbow dragons are a great um, clan. Dragons resonate with clan. Great clan to call in when ritualing that day or taking your sacred space for that day. If you're focusing on your own chakras, on your own chakra balancing, your own chakra alignments, this is something that you can call in when you're working on that. For those of us Reiki practitioners, when you're working on Reiki, some people focus directly on the chakra system. These are a group of essentially high vibrational beings that are always willing and wanting to work. You can call on these rainbow dragons to help assist in your work okay we um very important fire fire dragons we all use fire in so many different ways it's part of our gorgeous beautiful earthly elemental kingdom I often call on the fire dragons when I'm working with clients who have big things. So if you're feeling something coming up and you'd like to do a little of your one-on-one -on -one work with you and your higher self, calling in these fire dragons are really essential in burning off things that no longer serve you. Now, all the dragons work with the dragon fire or fire breath. So it doesn't have to be specifically a fire dragon. But I do know some um, alchemists that will call in uh, when there's something going on in the islands, right? There's volcanic stuff going on. There's really um, a lot of shifting in the titanic plates in the earth if you're wanting to guide or give your attention to these situations that are coming up environmentally. This is something that you can do. You can charge and plug into these fire dragons as they burn off and help balance the fire that's coming up in there. Okay, moving on. So we also have um, love dragons. So love dragons have the most beautiful energy. Their energy is more softer, nurturing energy. It's still extremely high vibrational upon, but this is a dragon that I call upon when I'm looking for unconditional love, when I'm looking to connect myself with my own self and find my authentic self who is all divinely love. So when we're having some like negative stuff come up and whatnot, it's very useful for me to call in love dragons to help me use that intense energy to kind of help me burn off whatever's coming up and coming in. And I don't want to go through too many more of these, but I do just kind of want to get you to see there's so many different, intricate different ways, but it doesn't have to be that way either. If you're one who likes specifics, if you're one who likes to build in on certain um, energies and you take the time to really work with all these different specific energies, you can do this. Um, I do have a PDF that has all sorts of prayer and in, in, invocation for each one of these different kinds of dragons. If this is of interest to you, I'd be more than happy to share this information. Please, again, I invite you to reach out. I will shoot it over. I don't want to take too much more time on going through the different kinds of dragons, but um, there's tons. And if you like specifics, that's a great way. The ether, the galactical, um, prosperity, all sorts of good stuff. Okay, so um, let's see. I can make a suggestion when working with um, dragons. They do as they are elemental beings. 
um, opening your space with an altar with representation from the elements is something they really enjoy. It's not necessary. They'd really like to be integrated on the day to day. So although we were just talking about how to ritual with dragons and specific dragons that we can ritual with, this does not have to be a formal ritual. This does not have to be something that's planned out or a certain time in our lunar cycle. This could be as simple as you're in a conversation with a loved one and they're not hearing you and you need to be a little bit more forceful you can call in your dragons to help bring that energy to the situation so that you have clarity in your communication and that you're let's say not powered over by somebody else who's generally doing that for you this could be in a simple situation this could be in a shower when you're just looking for empowerment in general to kind of let go of things that no longer serve us, call them the dragons. I invite you to have these experiences. I invite you to check out some different dragon meditations. Like I said, for, on YouTube, there are thousands. If you're having problems with that, let me know. Does anybody, I don't see any comments coming in. Does anybody have any questions or anything at this point? Anybody feeling pretty good? Okay, cool. So this was very important. This was not an intention in the very beginning of planning this out, but it seems to be what they're asking. And it's a really great way to sum up some of the information um, as far as why they're here and to introduce themselves. This was channeled back in October. I've read a lot of dragon channelings. I have channeled, channeled my own dragon information. And this to me, I felt the frequency affect me in a positive way. It's always for the most positive. Um, I'm always open to working with frequencies and alchemies, but it's always in a sacred container for the highest good of all. Um, I've asked my ancestors and my dragons to come in. Um, I've asked them to be here with us today. And I'm going to read this channeling um unfortunately i there's there i wanted to add music and do some other stuff but i didn't want it to get too fancy and for you not to hear what's going on here all because i'm not really sure how the sound and everything is going to translate so um if you'd like to close your eyes and visualize your dragons if you'd like to watch me stare at this piece of paper because there was no other way to do this i didn't want to introduce a voiceover with the new technology but um here we go. So the following is a direct channeling of the golden vortex dragon Arzoid. If you hear my voice change, it's generally because they're channeling through me and they're sending in light codes. Dragon Arzoid of the Dragon High Council, as well as another brown ancient earth dragon. In response to questions prepared by Brandy to be shared in general information and introduction for those of us humans who would like to increase our connection to work more closely and more purposely with Dragon. Transmission start. We are power vortex of primal force energy, spiraling through as dimensional, dimensional activators of the original design and shifting from as according to the unifying principle of energy movement in the universe. We work together as breathing, living elementals and sacred geometric patterns that we govern, guide, and masterfully shepherd through the reality of the macro levels. We are fractals of what you currently see as the Big Bang and hold much wisdom and knowledge. Some of us are of the time and some of us are newer generation birth from dragon eggs of our energetic patterning. This energetic patterning is also sometimes called our stories, our myths, and our legends. This is why when we are blocked from your conscious mind, dimensions during the human ego crusades, we lived on in the mythical realm quite comfortably. Humans have assisted the birthing of many fantastic and powerful dragons in this space. We thank you with their utmost gratitude. We exist in all realms of the universe, and you may have heard from our brothers and sisters of the cosmic, galactic, and other realms, but we are not scar beings. We are portals of all different energies, not just from the star system. Dark matter of other energies you have yet to discover, and where elements, energy, and matter all interact in space. In this space lies, and lies the dragon mother, 
the creator of all dragons. She is the energy of the Big Bang flowing through all things and carrying and pouring her life force of creation in and of this universe with her primal stream of energy vibrations that we dragons ride on. That is what we are. We are here. We are here. We are here. There is no why we are here. We have always been here. We think what you are asking is what is our current mission on and of planet Earth with the human energies to come and move energy in collaboration with you as human as the human collective as well as human individuals are moving on and creating energy lines, pathways, vortexes, and systems. We work together to guide and assist these energies so that they co-create the highest energetic field and energetic patterning and trajectory. We also help to place the human energy field in the clearest, flowing, cohesive, symbiotic, vibrationary channels to activate the portal of the streaming mandalas of the human energies on Earth. The human energy field is intimately connected to the energy field of the Earth and is currently harnessing these energies for technological and industrial processes. We are here to assist the higher integration of these energies in the best way for both the future of the planet and of the humans. All creations of the universe have their place in the current story, myth, or timeline. We have many missions as we are working with all branches of the Earth fractal. We have facilitated and worked with human energy forms for billions of years. Human and dragon forms we once combined in a greater way to help withstand the primal force energies of work and of earth and work with them in the way needed in the past as earth energies shift and evolve so does the human form you are not the first form of human life did not start when you think it did your definition of life is extremely limited and does not count energetic signatures or how life is expressed multi-dimensionally as factors in your science throughout Earth's life cycle we have seen the influence of many energies the current human expression is in the combination of many energies the current DNA system is flawed and a result of too many different influences, as well as how they are expressing with the energies of Earth at this time. Humans are not firing or activating key parts of their DNA and mind capacity. The connection to nature has also been further cut off, resulting in a limited capacity. Earth, nature, ritual, multi-dimensional cer ceremony, and mind expansion work has been removed from the mainstream consciousness in this fringe. We assist in bringing these energies to the greater collective and emphasize the practices and focus of respect, honor, and personal empowerment to open up your energy channels in the highest energy power field while also connecting to the earth and multi-dimensional field. This also holds open space for more energies to come through, such as plant, animal, fairies, star beings, angels, guides, etc., etc., etc. We are the symbol of many cultures and spiritual practices because we have proven our worth as direct pathways to this. Connecting with the dragon portals within, and they are many, including the mind, heart, and kundalini, as you say, opens you up to stronger connection to all the energies around you, as well as all of those human collective evolution. Continuing sound download, continuing light codes coming in through sound. 
toning. If you feel drawn to tone, tone on your own. Oh. Ending transmission. Thank you for your attention. We look forward to working with you. It's a greater pleasure and honor for having all of us here with you. We absolutely appreciate this platform for bringing you these light codes, downloads, and energies as we continue to work with you. You are the pioneers. You are the leaders. It is much appreciated. We go in love. Holy what smokes, Batman, let me take this take fur off. Fur off. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a good one. They told me they were just gonna do what was best. They were just gonna, you know, and that was big for me. And um, I invite you guys that, you know, as you continue to be working with these dragons and you continue to be doing this kind of energy work, if you welcome these dragons into your field, you know, you, I invite you to continue to share, continue to give yourself as many people who are listening, you know, if it's an online platform and, you know, maybe you're just kind of getting into this and you just want to share what you've experienced here. If you'd like to be connected to Brandy and to our clan, feel free to reach out to me and we can do that. You know, like this is about us coming together and this is about us using ourselves as these beautiful channeling portals to bring in this energy as we ascend and um, like I said we don't need to have a session scheduled for us to work together um, and this this channeling you know this isn't something I paid for this is something that she's offered up and as I had said like I've done some of my own work and it's been really really good but this really like hits like it, I don't know if you guys I don't know what you're experiencing but even when I read it to you like this is very interesting I'm actually dyslexic and when I read channeling and I bring in energy, it's probably the only time that I don't stumble over words. So I appreciate um, you guys allowing that and inviting that and receiving that and being here with me today. So, um, so yeah, so that's really good stuff. So what did we talk about? We talked about the different dragons. We talked about how to go through and bring them in. Um, the, the the prime thing for them is a lot of times when you do these dra dragon meditations, they have us go out. We're going out of our body. We're going into the etheric. We're going into the higher levels of frequency, into the city of light, into the dragon realm. And that is a great experience. You can go in there and meet them. You can request with certain assistance. You can follow somebody else's lead um, as far as listening to their own um, guided meditation. But they've been making it very, very clear that you can almost wind up with, I don't want to say more about it because there's space and time for all of these things to come in. But when we go in and we're here and we're in our body and we're going into our own subconscious, I find that that's when I connect to Gaia the most. And that's a really big part of working with the dragons is connecting in the elemental way. And connecting in this way and being that pillar of life, light, the light and life, bringing, being that pillar and being that channel to bring that energy into this planet in this time. And this is such a magical time. Um, and it's such a big time for us. So going in and just taking that space, um, I, there was a little bit of toning and a little bit of vocals that were coming through on that. Um, that's another big thing. If As you start to work with the, the dragons, they tone a lot. I don't know if you guys have dappled in or been familiar with light language, but that's really coming into the collective right now. And the dragons being such high vibrational beings often use a lot of toning and light language to communicate and to 
integrate um, these high frequencies that are coming in. So if you're meditating or you're going on an inward journey and you're working with the dragons and you're feeling something come up verbally and vocally, please, I invite you to bring that out, to put your medicine into the ether to put your medicine into this planet and into this realm and i would even suggest taking it to the next level if you're really inspired you can start recording what you're doing you can start recording as you're going in and you're working with these elemental beings and you're toning and you're sounding and maybe you want to send it to me and be like hey i downloaded this and i was doing this and this came from this and i want to share it with you great if you want to share it with other people um if you're feeling like you want to share but there's some stuff in the way you can call in the dragons for some empowerment um i've been you know doing reiki since i was 17 and right now i've been so excited because the word reiki has like broken through and now it's not there's not a lot of you know it's a lot different if you know i'm at a show i'm at a psychic fair and they're asking what i do and i'm like oh i love really doing quantum shamanism and these big shifts and we can do this and we can reframe this so we can get go to that and you know big changes and they're like but do you do reiki so i'm like sure we can absolutely do reiki and reiki is very helpful especially for people they're telling me they're dealing with anxiety and there's going to be a lot of people that are waking up right now people that you never thought were going to wake up people that you thought you you left in the dust three years ago were going to hop into your dms and it's kind of this thing that you know we are the leaders we are the pioneers and you know we probably all felt like we were pioneers for like 35 years and we're still here pioneering and really, this is the time when I started getting really intense. And, you, and, it, and, it, and as far as like time goes, it's like we're working at the speed of light. It's very, very, very quick. So when you work with the dragons at such a level of intensity, I feel from my own personal experience that adding it as a layer on top of work I'm already doing is really taking some of this to the next level. Because when we clear out stuff that no longer serves us, in the beginning we talked about storage container versus processing unit. Our, our systems, our energetic systems have the ability to process some of these things. And sometimes things are really, really big and it's hard to bring them up. But working with this dragon realm energy, it's made it a lot easier for me. And I invite you to try this with yourself to be able to maybe process some more energy than I had in the past. It's a higher frequency. When you're working with alchemy, if you have a frequency that's so high, and this isn't everything, this is an absolute, this may or may not resonate, but usually it will on its own, through our technology, raise other things up. If you've ever noticed when you walk into a, maybe when you're with family and it's not as much like this beautiful gathering where we're all open, but maybe it's at work or with family when you walk into the room because of your frequency, because of your consciousness, you change things. We change things by simply existing, by simply being. We are stepping into a time of the divine feminine. For so many years, it was do, do, go, go, do, do. I want to grow. How do I grow? How do I get there? I'm going to do, do, masculine, masculine, penetrate, penetrate, penetrate. And now we're connecting. I invite you, if this resonates with you, take it in. I feel we're connecting with this divine feminine. Another activation I offer is a feminine activation. It's unlocking that. For a lot of time, a lot of time, we've had a lot of these frequencies that don't necessarily feel super safe to come out for, you know, fear of being penetrated. So we have a lot of this divine feminine energy. And a lot of us probably have a shit ton of divine feminine energy that's already out. So this may not be your cup of tea. This may be something you want to explore on your own. There's a lot of working with the Mary Magdalene energy and the sacred rose energy and all of the sacred womb healing. And it's all coming up for a reason. It's all there for a reason. I don't know how we got from dragons and now we're here in the room, but that's where we're at. <laughs> that's what we're doing. And I appreciate y'all's fluidity. 
But so when we create the safe space, and we create the safe space where we can be just like in SSGG, where we can be vulnerable and open, that divine feminine can come out and play. And this has nothing to do with gender. We are all both feminine and masculine energies. We're however you choose to present totally different ball game. This is about, you know, our DNA and we both we all have these structures within our being. So the divine feminine is that creation energy. It's that creation energy. It's that nectar that we're we're bathing in. It's that beam. It's that frequency. So, you know, we talk about, and, you know, I'm sure you guys have talked about uh, manifestation, the law of attraction, all of that stuff. It's the divine feminine that keeps us created or connected to that uniform, that, okay, the, the, the divine feminine that keeps us connected to that universal energy, that um, cosmic creation energy. So if we're stuck and we're not super balanced and we're doing this masculine stuff and we're doing, 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 ritualing, ritualing, rising, rising, and we're not settling into these feminine frequencies of connecting in a safe space, we're not putting out that frequency that's as high as it could be. And we want to put out the highest frequency we can for ourselves, for others, for our planet. And it seems, you know, from my personal experience, the more self-care, the more self-love, the more being, the less stressing about doing. When I get to the place of, okay, I want to build my business. What am I going to do, 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 do? How am I going to pull it in? Like physically, I'm off track. I'm already gone. I'm already out of that divine feminine. I'm already out of that frequency that's going to bring it in. But if I'm vibrating at this unconditional, unconditional love, that safety, that intensity of this higher frequency that the dragons can help bring into our field, it's going to come to me. My clients are stopping. I'm not getting schedules. And I'm not. Things aren't coming in. That's an indication for me to look at me and what am I doing, not what my website is doing. What am I doing? And of course, obviously, there are exceptions to every rule, but this is what's coming in. This is what's channeling right now. So I'm just sharing with you. Um, I guess there are a lot of self-employed people in this room. Or maybe like your main gig, your side gig became your main gig with COVID or like, you know, all that kind of stuff. That was fun. Right, guys? That was really fun. That was a nice little deep dive. Um, does anybody like feeling? Oh, look, I have a little red note. Let me see what this says. Okay. Talk. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Tone your own. Uh, let me... Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. So, so there's a question and it is, okay. So the question was, how do we connect a little bit more with the mythological realm? And um, Sasha was saying that she feels like it's the same way you connect with the unicorns. And it really is. And actually um, remind me to, to connect you. There is somebody who's been doing a ton of unicorn channeling. And if you're interested in getting in on that, um, anybody feel free. I can put that up too somewhere. If we have like a group or something, I can put all this information up. But so oftentimes it was in, in this, we just did a little bit of theta healing for those of us who are in there or those of us who have worked with theta healing. It's the same kind of going up. There's two ways to do this in my personal or my personal experience. And I can tell you what I've experienced. And then I invite you to kind of see what feels good for you. Um, that's the other thing is feeling in the body as we're kind of um, dipping into these new ways of doing things or new concepts or something. If something feels good for you, then, you know, in resonance, Needs, go with it. If it doesn't feel good for you, then that's fine too. The body never gonna lie, unless it's anxiety. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so connecting. It's the same way with the theta. The dragon realm. If you're trying to go up to that frequency, it's up, 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 and we're like. If you bring yourself to the city of light and you get yourself up, up, up there in the city of light, 
generally the dragon realm is above that as far as where the unicorn layer is. I'm not real familiar with that, but it's all about your intention because there is no space and time. So if you're trying to connect with that realm, you're trying to connect with something specific. The other thing that's coming in big right now is what the UK calls tree people. That's a Sasquatch. That's an elemental being that's coming in hot right now because the planet is rising frequency. So when you're trying to connect with the unicorn realm, it's about intention. You can visualize yourself kind of going up, up, up. So you're in that kind of whatever you need to visualize to kind of get you up there is where you want to go. But I'm also a firm believer of calling them in. You know, we're multidimensional beings. You don't physically or spiritually or actually need to be specifically anything. We are everything and we are nothing all at the same time. We could it's it's all connected. We're all in the quantum. So if you know you're finding that you need something specific, you know, I would invite you to go in. And to go in and ask to be shown one of your dragons, one of your guy, dragon guides. Who am I working with? Come in. I would love, you know, I'm asking. You got to go in. You go into your meditative state. You know what I really love is the Nordic music to get there. That's super helpful. Buddy's didgeridoo. It's super helpful. Sound, man. Sound, vibration. Because that's what these beans are. They're vibrational frequency. High vibing beans. So if that's a good way to get there too. Maybe you're toning. Maybe you have a drum. A singing bowl. Maybe you're dancing. Shaking it out. Shaking it out. Um, but taking the time and, and using whatever you need to get there. There's really no wrong way to do it. It's just carving out the space to do it in your day. And I will tell you, it is a lot like the muscle because when you're working with these beings, you're working on your clear vision, clairvoyance, your clair. When we say clair, that's the French word for clear. We have our physical body, our senses, touch, taste, sound, all that. We have our energetic body. Our energetic body has our clairs, claircognizance, clairvoyance, Clear cognizance came in first because that's the knowing. We talked a little bit about just knowing the other day. You guys, we're psychic as hell. That's clear cognizance. Like, we're all psychic. These gifts are going coming in stronger and stronger the more you work them like a muscle. And once you start working with energies like that, the possibilities are endless. You start calling in loved ones' past, ancestors, spirit communication is something else. I also dabble with my one-on-ones. And how I like to work with spirit communication with my clients is I tell them how I do it. We work through what I do. I lead them through a process. But I don't want them coming to me all the time. I want them to go directly out directly to, directly in, however, their own communication and have the tools in the toolbox to be able to call on the assistance when they need it. And that's the other thing with, um, with our guides and especially the dragons. You have to call them in. You know, they, you know, there are, I mean, even with angels, we have to call them in. There, there are guidance team. Our guidance team is there. But they can't interject. They can't. I mean, you know, there are situations that are exceptions to the rule. And they will show you they're there. But, you know, once we start working with these realms and these energies, I mean, you know, even when we did the first meditation class way back when, when we contacted our ancestors, that was a green light that you were looking for guidance in that moment. So it's not like something you have to do all the time. Once you're establishing these relationships, they will come in and out. Um as you're starting to develop these clairs, the dragons really do pump you up with a vibration that brings you closer. Clair sentience. This is the empath realm. This is understanding how we feel energy in our bodies. The clair sentience. Um, okay, we'll talk about that. So the whole thing with the empath thing is, yes, we're all empathic, but that's not where we stop. I, don't, I suggest or invite to you guys the understanding or the understanding of we are all empathic, but we are also all clairvoyant, claircognizant, clairaugusin. Um, that's a smell. Augusin, augusin, aga. And then there's even taste. I have a client who's um, 
who's one of her spirit guides, is an ancestor who is of um, Mediterranean descent. And when this guide is close, she tastes pasta. That's one of her superpowers. We spend hours on working at Claire Visions, but she literally tastes pasta when her guide is in the room. There's another big one that's coming in is the smell. When the tobacco, if you're, I have two clients. It's a mother and daughter, and they're smelling tobacco. And they literally have like, like they think it's coming from their house, and after many sessions, they're still not convinced that it's not physically in this realm and that they're psychic. And I'm like having the convenience that they're psychic. That tobacco is so hard for we're coming in right now. And this has a lot to do with what we talked a little bit about yesterday when we did that beautiful tobacco blessing. What's up, AJ? Are you just sending me vibes? She's sending you time. Oh, okay. Tim, thank you. <laughs> Talk about being real, real smooth and nonchalant. I blew that one. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So this stuff is coming in a lot, but the dragons are really excited because there's so many people that are focusing on this, and um, you know, call it in, call it in a lot. These waterways, guys. You know, if even if you kind of felt like you really resonated with that and you figured out you could carve out a little space at least once a month to go down to a local waterway, or even if you couldn't get out, even if you just ran your water in your bathroom or your kitchen and connected on that level, that water probably needs a lot more vibration than the water that's even in natural places um, and calling the dragons. Um, Sasha, did I answer your question about how to really connect on that? Yeah, I did. You did. Um, you did. Now you're bringing up another question about water dragons. Like, mm -hmm. don't talk about it. What's the water dragon question? No. Okay, like, I feel like my brain is trying to do this thing where I'm like, okay, Falcor was this kind of dragon, and then those fire, like, the green dragons that spit fire are fire dragon. Like, I can't really place a water dragon. Um, I don't know how to say it. Are there dragons that you could, like, point us toward in this weird way? Okay, so this is this the thing, like, and it's not always what it seems, and there's no wrong answer. So, for example, you said the green dragon that breathes fire is a fire dragon. Well, to be honest with you, most times when you see green dragons, they're actually earth dragons. But, like, there's no, like, wrong, because they all breathe fire, essentially. Not all. I can't say, okay, not all, sorry. They're not, they're, they don't all breathe fire, but typically this is one of their superpowers, and it's the intensity that comes in a lot on the fire. So, but I, I would say the more we try to cognizantly determine what's what, the more it takes us out of our heart space. And it's, it's um, I don't want to say it stops us from receiving energy and downloads that we can anchor into the planet, but it may not be as smooth. And it may take us away from what we're doing. And it may also, even they're telling me, it may actually like to try to differentiate because there's so many, it might just like dip, like almost frustrate and like take you out of it entirely because some of us are still so left brain that, I mean, you know, that's that. So I would invite you. And guys, my email is on my, I'm from the light is the name of the company. So my email um, is on there. Please feel free to anytime over the weekend, direct message me um, about my email or my cell phone or find me on social media. My last name is Corsiani with a K. Um, and we can do that. And then if you have any questions, continuing. Because part of my role in this is to just continue to spread the word. The more of us beings that can bring this information in and connect to it, and especially the earth ceremonies, guys. Like, I mean, what a blessing to be able to have this tool in our toolbox for ourselves, and even the grounding. And I feel like it's a natural thing can help us um, when we're working and doing ritual with the planet, especially with the dragons, it really just grounds us into those lower chakras so that when we're working on our frequency and bringing things into our reality, if we're not grounded, it's it doesn't... My personal opinion is if we're not grounded, we can work up here with all these other chakras and all this frequency, but if we're not grounded into Gaia, it's going to take a lot longer to pop into the 3D. So this is a great way to do that with the elemental energy. 
Sarah, did you want to say something? Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't figure out if you were could hear me or not. I was like, I don't know. Yes. Um, so first, I just want to say, and, and sorry for being so like amber or like boom. No, I love it. <laughs> but I have my dragon wings on, and yes. <laughs> So one thing that happened this year, you just blew my mind, by the way, with the sacred masculine, sacred feminine, because I let go. I've been living so much in my sacred masculine for so long as many of us have. Right. And I finally released my corporate job and, and doing that world first. Can you hear me or? No, yeah. No, yeah. For so many years. And um, what's so funny about everything that you're sharing is... I love dragons, but like they started coming in hard. Like I talked about them weekly. They would like come up in my dreams, especially like a burnt orange color. I would never think it's okay. It's definitely a dragon the way it breathes. And but I felt really blocked and like understanding what my my dreams were. So left that job. I've been totally in like reception mode instead of penetration mode for the last six months, besides the moments where I'm like hardcore trying to build this business. Um, Nordic music, you mentioned that. I was like, I have three playlists that I, that I created in the last three months that are all like Lord of the Rings or Nordic like influences. Or, it's so interesting. So I don't, I don't know what my point was here, but I guess what my question was, I, get, I, 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 I would love a starting point because I'm, what I didn't do was call in the dragon. I just kind of, I was kind of letting them come to me, but now with what you're saying, I, it's okay to call them in. I just felt like I was missing an outcome, like I'm trying too hard to channel the dragon, but I really like this idea of calling it in and like, what does that look like? Yeah. And what does that feel like too, right? Like that feminine, like, what does that feel like? And like, and I will say that when a lot of times you're clear sentience and those of us who have that real strong, I know we're getting uh, close on time here, guys, but I, I don't want this to stop here. When we are done and we separate and group out, like, please keep in contact with me. I would love that. That would be an honor to be able to continue to talk dragons and to bring this into our consciousness as, you know, a tribe. So, and we can be our own clan. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yay, drag me down. I'm so about it. But um, yeah, they're, they want to work. They're ready to work. They're they're very, very grateful to work. And they want, and I say work, and I, you know, I really shouldn't be using that work, but, you know, whatever. I haven't figured out new work yet. They really want to, like, whatever. So, yeah, call them in. And then that probably, that dragon that you're seeing, if you're seeing the same one over and over, it's probably, it's probably one of yours. Like there's many that will come work, but that's probably one of your guys. It's probably that's why it's coming in so hot. You can't even deny it, right? So look at look at well, you got a little dragon wing. I got a little dragon in my. I was like over here. And I was like, at first when I first started, I've always resonated with Nordic, Nordic paganism, and I've always like I definitely have a couple past lives there. And every time I get ready for like a dragon speech, my hair is all like this, and I'm like, why? What? What is going on? And then like I got a picture of the wooden ships, and I was like, duh. So, so that's it, I guess, guys. It's been a pleasure. I tried to put Sierra on broadcast so you could all see her wings and mask. Hold on. She <laughs> I messed it up. Oh my god, I loved it. That was so good. I so, and I so appreciate the last thing I'll say, guys. Well, here first of all, Madge wants to say hi. These stone beans, too, and if you guys really resonate with stone beans, these crystal beans, like, that could have been a whole other speech on channeling energy for the crystal beans. But this little... Oh, Deb, I love it! I love it! So funny. I love this little dragon. I am so freaking excited right now. This is what I'm saying, like, the the are feel. okay. This is hard, feel. so I just wanted to show really present representation in my life of how obsessed I am. And also, two minute warning um, <laughs> we're going to have a break and then we're going to lead into dinner prep. But I just want to say, what a freaking amazing group of beings! What beautiful conversations we get to have, and I love you all. Yeah. 
yeah good stuff guys good stuff well thank you for letting me do what i felt was best and thank you for receiving the channeling even though a good portion of that was me reading the page and love you all so much Audrey, Audrey, where do you live, Audrey? Audrey. I'm in South Texas. I'm in San Antonio. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I have the Buffalo accent from the bar because I was born and raised there. But I'm in South Texas. <laughs> cool. So I guess that's it. I guess we will head over to dinner. Again, please, I have said this six times and I'll say it six more. I would love to connect with you all. This has been an absolute pleasure. Aho, from my heart to yours. So much love. Our dragon heart, our dragon breath. Some good stuff. Bye. See you later. I'm like, I guess I just walk away.